Hi, I'm Sally. Before I continue, please like and subscribe. Now let me tell you a story about how my life took an unexpected turn. In a quiet neighborhood, where each house had its own story, mine stood modest yet significant, a symbol of my hard work and dedication. It was more than just a structure of bricks and mortar. It was a sanctuary I built for my aging parents. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting a soft golden glow, there was an unexpected knock. I opened the door to find Annie, my sister, standing there, disheveled, eyes brimming with tears. Sally, I had nowhere else to go, she stammered, her voice quivering. I hadn't seen Annie in years, and the sight of her in such a state was jarring. What happened, Annie? You look... What happened to you? She hesitated, then whispered. It's John. He... He's been hurting me. The bruises on her arms were like dark shadows against her skin. My heart ached for her. Despite our differences, she was still my sister. Come in, Annie. You're safe here, I said, stepping aside. As we sat in the living room, our parents joined us, their expressions a mix of concern and shock. What do you mean John has been hurting you? Mom asked, her voice laced with worry. He's a monster, Mom. He hits me, threatens me. I can't go back there. Annie sobbed, her story unraveling like a tragic ballad. Dad's hands clenched into fists. That bastard! How could he lay a hand on you? The room was thick with tension and disbelief. I tried to process it all. But Annie, why didn't you tell us sooner? I was scared. I thought he would change. But I can't live in fear anymore. I need to be here with you, Annie said, her gaze pleading. Mom wrapped her arms around Annie. Of course you can stay. This is your home too. I sat there, a storm of emotions brewing within me. Part of me was skeptical. Annie had a flair for the dramatic, but the sight of her bruises, the quiver in her voice, it was all too real. Thank you, she whispered, a tear rolling down her cheek. I nodded, though unease gnawed at me. We'll help you through this, Annie, whatever you need. The days that followed were a blur of tension and adjustment. Annie's presence changed the dynamics in our once peaceful home. She shared horrific tales of her life with John, each one more disturbing than the last. I found myself working longer hours, partly to avoid the heavy atmosphere at home. One evening, as I returned, I overheard a conversation between Annie and our parents. I just feel like Sally doesn't understand me. She's hardly ever home. Annie's voice tinged with resentment. Mom's voice was soft, consoling. She's just busy, dear. She built this house for us, remember? But that's just it. She's always so self-involved. I'm going through a tough time and she's absent. Annie countered. Their words stung. Was I really being selfish? But something didn't sit right with me. Annie's words felt manipulative, playing on our parents' sympathies. I shook off the feeling, reminding myself that Annie was the victim here. She needed us, and I had to be there for her, even if it meant putting my own feelings aside. Then came the night that changed everything. Annie confronted me in the kitchen, her eyes cold and accusatory. You think you're so perfect, Sally building this house, acting like you're better than everyone else. I was taken aback. Annie, what are you talking about? You're a parasite, living off mom and dad. You think you're such a saint, but you're almost 30 with no life of your own. Her words were like a slap across my face. Annie, I built this house for our family. How can you say that? She sneered. Because it's true. You need to leave, Sally. I'm the one who needs them now. Not you. I stood there, my heart pounding, as I realized this was no longer about Annie needing shelter. This was a takeover, and I was being pushed out of my own home. You can't be serious, I said, disbelief choking my words. I am. Mom and Dad agree. It's time for you to move on, Sally. I wanted to argue, to fight back, but the look in her eyes told me this had been her plan all along. I had been played by my own sister. That night, I packed my bags, each item feeling heavier than the last. I was leaving the house I built, the family I loved, but I knew this wasn't the end. Annie may have won this round, but I wasn't going to let her destroy everything I worked for. This was just the beginning. As I zipped up my last suitcase, a resolve settled within me. This was not the end. Annie may have won this battle, but I was not going to let her win the war. My family, my home my dignity. 
I was going to fight for it all. Life outside the comfort of what was once my home became a harsh reality. My nights were spent on friends' couches. My days drowned in work. But this was more than just about finding a new place to live. It was about uncovering the truth behind Annie's deceit. One evening, after a long day at the office, I was at a local coffee shop, mindlessly stirring my cup, when a familiar face caught my eye. It was Mike, a mutual friend, and someone who knew Annie's husband, John. Sally? Hey, it's been ages. How are you holding up? His concern was genuine, but I was hesitant. I'm managing Mike, just taking things one day at a time. We chatted for a bit until the conversation inevitably turned to Annie and John. I heard about the trouble with Annie. Tough situation, huh? Yeah, but something doesn't add up, Mike. I mean, Annie said John was abusive, but... Mike leaned in, his expression turning serious. Listen, I've known John for years. He's got his faults, but abusive? That's hard to believe. My heart raced. This was the inconsistency I was looking for. Are you sure? Annie seemed so certain. I can't speak for their private life, Sally. But the John I know wouldn't hurt a fly. You might want to look into it a bit more. His words were the catalyst. I had to dig deeper, to find out what was really going on. Over the next few days, I reached out to more people, gathering bits and pieces of information. Each conversation, each story, seemed to contradict Annie's claims. Then, I had a breakthrough. A former neighbor of Annie and John had some startling information. They seemed like a normal couple to me. But Sally, there was this one time I saw Annie yelling at John. And it was intense. She looked different, almost controlling. The pieces of the puzzle were slowly coming together. Annie's image as the victim was crumbling, replaced by a portrait of manipulation and lies. Armed with this new information, I knew what I had to do. It was time to confront Annie and bring the truth to light. But I had to be careful. Annie was cunning, and I couldn't underestimate her. As I laid out all the evidence I had collected, a sense of determination washed over me. This was not just about getting my home back. It was about justice, about exposing the lies that had torn my family apart. I was ready for the confrontation, ready to fight for what was rightfully mine. Annie had taken my home, but she wouldn't take my spirit. This was my battle, and I was not going down without a fight. My journey to unravel Annie's web of lies led me through old memories and uncharted territories. The puzzle pieces of Annie's deceit were finally coming together, and it was time to put my plan into action. At a small cafe downtown, I met with Dave, an old friend and a savvy lawyer. So, you're sure Annie lied about the whole thing? Dave asked, his eyes scanning the documents I'd placed before him. Absolutely, and I have proof. I need your help, Dave. He leaned back, his mind ticking. All right, Sally. This is delicate. But if what you're saying is true, we have a strong case to reclaim your house. We'll need a solid strategy, though. I nodded, determination fueling my resolve. I've got a plan, but it's risky. I need to expose Annie in front of our parents first. They need to see her for who she truly is. Dave raised an eyebrow. That's a bold move. Are you sure you can pull it off? With a bit of help, yes. I've got friends who know the truth about Annie and John. It's time they came forward. The next few days were a whirlwind of preparation. I reached out to several old acquaintances who had known Annie and John, convincing them to help me. The truth had to come out, and it was up to me to shine a light on it. The day of reckoning arrived. Our parents, unaware of what was about to unfold, sat in the living room as I ushered in the small group of truth bearers. Annie, caught off guard, stood frozen. What's this, Sally? What are you doing? Annie's voice trembled, a hint of fear beneath her words. I took a deep breath. It's time for the truth, Annie. Mom, Dad, I know this is hard to believe, but Annie has been lying to us all. Annie's face turned white. You're crazy, Sally. I don't know what you're talking about. One by one, my friends began to speak, their stories painting a picture very different from the one Annie had crafted. The neighbor, the old friend, even someone from Annie's past, all revealing the lies and manipulations. Mom's hands covered her mouth, her eyes wide with shock. Dad sat motionless, his expression a mix of anger and disbelief. I turned to Annie, my voice steady. You plotted to take the house to kick me out. Why, Annie? Why do all this? Annie's facade finally cracked. Because you always had everything. The perfect daughter, 
the successful one. I was just the screw-up, the one everyone pitied. I wanted something for myself for once. Her confession echoed through the room, heavy with years of jealousy and pain. Annie, I never wanted to hurt you. This was our family's home. You could have been part of it, but you chose to tear us apart. The room was silent. The truth finally laid bare. Annie stood there, the weight of her actions dawning on her. Mom and Dad looked at each other, their expressions a mix of sadness and betrayal. I knew this was just the beginning. The legal battle to reclaim my home was next, but the hardest part was done. I had exposed the lies, protected my legacy, and stood up for what was right. This was my fight for justice, for truth, and it was far from over. The air in the room was thick with tension. Annie stood there, exposed and defeated, as our parents processed the truth. Why, Annie? Why all this deception? Dad's voice broke the silence, a mix of anger and heartbreak. I... I just wanted to be seen, to be valued. Sally always had everything, Annie stammered, tears streaming down her face. But to hurt your own sister, your own family... Mom's voice was barely above a whisper, filled with disbelief. I looked at Annie, the sister I once knew, now a stranger. You didn't have to do this, Annie. There was always a place for you here. Annie's eyes met mine, a glimmer of regret passing through them. But it was too late. The damage was done. Dad stood up, his decision clear. You need to leave, Annie. You've broken this family's trust. It's time you learn the consequences of your actions. The next day, we went to confront John, Annie's husband. The man I met was not the monster Annie had described. His eyes were tired, his voice weary. So, you finally know the truth, John sighed. You knew about her lies? I asked. He nodded. I tried to make our marriage work, but Annie... She wanted more. More attention. More drama. She'd do anything to get it. And the bruises? Mom asked, her voice trembling. John's response sent chills down my spine. She did it to herself. Used to hit herself with tools, create those marks. I couldn't believe it myself until I saw it. The revelation was a shock, yet it made everything fall into place. Annie's manipulation knew no bounds. I'm filing for divorce. I can't be with someone so... destructive, John declared, his tone resolute. And so, Annie was left with nothing. No family to manipulate, no husband to control. She had orchestrated her own downfall. As I watched her pack her bags, a part of me felt sorry for her. But this was the path she chose. Annie left the house, alone. A stark contrast to the sister who once sought refuge under its roof. It was a painful, yet necessary closure for our family. The house, once filled with tension and lies, slowly started to heal. Our parents, though hurt, began to find peace. And I, amidst the chaos had stood my ground. This was more than just a victory. It was a lesson in truth and justice. A reminder that no matter how dark things seem, the light of truth always prevails. As Annie's car disappeared down the road, I knew our lives would never be the same. But in that change, there was hope. Hope for a future free from deceit. A future where honesty and love could once again thrive in our family home. This was my story of victory and justice a testament to the power of truth and the strength of the human spirit. As we close the chapter on Sally's tumultuous journey, it leaves us pondering a significant and complex question. Was Sally's decision to not forgive Annie, despite her eventual confession and plea for forgiveness, the right one? This situation delves into the intricate dynamics of family relationships and the concept of forgiveness. Do you believe family ties should always offer a path to redemption, no matter the depth of betrayal? Or are there certain transgressions that irrevocably break these bonds? Is there a line that, once crossed, changes the nature of familial love and duty? It's a deeply personal and potentially controversial topic, and I'm eager to hear your perspectives. Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Your insights are not only valuable, but help foster a community of diverse viewpoints. Also, if you found yourself engrossed in Sally's story and are keen on exploring more such narratives, please consider showing your support by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Your engagement is what fuels our passion for storytelling and helps us bring more such content to you. Thank you for being a part of this journey.